the eternal light in Menlo Park, a shining symbol of the dynamic genius of Thomas Alva Edison, benefactor of mankind. Edison was three when the California gold rush beckoned Americans westward. A 14-year-old newsboy, Tom edited the first paper printed on a moving train. Sitting with the first phonograph, his favorite invention, Edison was famous at 30. At 43, he had given the world the first practical incandescent lamp. A classic photograph, Edison after working 72 hours straight. His industrial research laboratory, now the Thomas Alva Edison Museum, still stands in West Orange, New Jersey. The Edison Laboratory was to become known as the cradle of American industry. The chemical building is exactly as it was when the inventor died, with half-filled bottles, experiments in the making, and the table he used as a desk. His library held 10,000 volumes. And here is the littered desk of the greatest genius of his time. The cubby holes are still filled with papers and notes on unfinished experiments. It seems he has just stepped outside for a few minutes and will return. And Edison himself arriving for work does step out of the past through the magic of his own great invention, the motion picture camera. Since childhood, Edison's hearing had been seriously impaired, but the determined experimenter spent 40 fruitful years working in the West Orange Laboratory. These were strenuous, exciting years for Edison and his associates. For the vigorous, tireless Edison, inventing was work, 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 often against heartbreaking obstacles. Toiling around the clock, he snatched only brief hours of sleep through his famous cat naps. On other afternoons, he could be seen punching his time clock hours after others had gone. The Edison family home, Glenmont, was in nearby Llewellyn Park. Here were spent those precious hours of relaxation that the busy inventor could spare from his laboratory chores. With Mrs. Edison, he appears in the garden. Glenmont, too, is standing today, defying the relentless march of time. And Edison's first experimental phonograph can still be operated 75 years after amazed Americans heard that a man had made a machine talk. Now listen to one of the first coin-operated phonographs. The Thunder March, played by the Edison Military Band. It was not long before the cylinder phonographs were bringing a new form of entertainment into the parlors of thousands of homes. Played on the earliest home machine made by the Edison Company, here is an actual recording of the gay 90s. Love me and the world is mine, sung by Harry Anthony, Edison Records. This is old Menlo Park, where temporarily laying aside the phonograph, Edison perfected an idea that was to lead his fellow men out of the gaslight era. It was the first practical incandescent lamp. Here is an exact replica of that revolutionary invention. This bulb, the first sold commercially, used filaments made of Japanese bamboo. Next, Edison invented the kinetoscope, the first successful motion picture machine. This is how movies began, not on a screen, but in a box with viewers peeping in to watch the moving film. The Black Mariah was the world's first motion picture studio. Here is a model of that primitive wooden structure which revolved on a circular track to follow the sun. It was covered with black roofing paper and was painted black on the inside. 
the roof was movable and could be raised to let in the sunlight, for only the bright sun could etch an image on the slow film of that period. At first, the simplest subjects were filmed. This movie, made in 1893, is one of the oldest in existence. Edison's own company produced the first big screen hit, The Great Train Robbery. The naturalist, John Burroughs, left. Harvey Firestone and Edison often went camping. The inventor enjoys one of his legendary catnaps. Henry Ford, Edison's close friend, joins them. Here, Ford tries to out-chop Burroughs while Edison referees. Burroughs wins. Ford has a close call. While Edison offers congratulations to the winner, the determined Mr. Ford goes right on chopping. Together, Ford and Edison revolutionized our way of life. With Ty Cobb and Connie Mack, Edison talks baseball in 1927 and demonstrates his pep and nimbleness at the age of 80. Warmly human, a practical dreamer, the wizard of Menlo Park. He was the architect of the industrial age, illuminating the path of progress, lightening the labors of mankind. The light he lit shall never dim, but through all time shall honor him. This is the legacy of Thomas Alva Edison.